So I'm going to be talking about this card. And this card and I share a very interesting history. I used to play, if you believe this is a deck, um, this was one of my most fun casual decks. It was called uh, Gob Red Green Goblins. <laughs> this was played in my deck. And the funny part, the really funny part about this card was back in the day, it was really bad. Like, really, really bad. Like, it was kind of like a lot of the green cards back in the day needed forest and play to make them the creature grow bigger, or there was a lot of limitations. This card is legendary, so that's a limitation. And if you're playing a lot of elves, you, the last thing you would want to see is you would want to see two of them. So I decided I'm going to make an Elf Goblin deck from the Elves vs. Goblin set. And so I combined the two sets to try to make the deck, and then Penhaven was definitely a card I played four of because I didn't know better. And I just really liked the tree, and I liked the quote, and I started collecting a large amount of Penhavens, which I cannot find in storage right now, so I don't know exactly how many of these I have. But I know at least I have a play set of Legend Ones. Uh, those, that was the one I used in my Goblin vs. Elves deck. And multiple, multiple play sets of the Time Shift one. And the reason I had them... Again, the whole idea of this week of finance videos is... You have to not listen to other people. You have to use your gut feeling about a card. Like, and then if the card goes up, like Dragon Speaker Shaman, I mean, that card still amazes me how much it is worth, and more importantly, how easily it trades, then that's good for you. Or good Taxon Probe, or the Power Plants. I can tell you, good, those Power Plants, or the Urza Lands, will almost, I mean, they will bulk. They will bulk at some point in time. And people, like just didn't even want them. Now they are one to two dollar cards that people really want and are willing to trade even legacy staples. If you have 12 of them, yeah, I mean, I could totally see that happening because what are, is that other person's option to find 12 different cards or find like that many different cards and hope that, like, that some player has them? No, absolutely not. Or, or pay money like for them? Like, no, most players don't want to pay money ever, so trading is definitely the, at least in my locals, it's the way to uh, get cards. So Penhaven, again, I gotta go ahead and find these cards because I know for certain I have a lot of Penhavens. It might be in like an elf deck somewhere, or I gotta look. But this card, back in the day, pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar. And then somehow, you have an Infect deck. I do know what, exactly why this deck card went up. It did so good in Infect. But could you have predicted when this card came out in Time Shift that Infect... You didn't even know about Infect. Infect was like the crappiest mechanism ever. Like poison counters. Like that was so bad back in the day. Like you would have never expected this card to be good with the poison counter mechanism. But then, lo and behold, they made Infect good, modern good. And lo and behold, they made the Urza Lands good. Lo and behold, the Taxon Probe was good. Lo and behold, the a whole block was dedicated to dragons. The common question I get, and I just want to clarify this question, is you know, how can I build my collection? And the best answer I can give you is pick cards that you like collecting and collect them. Sometime in the future, I mean, Dragon Speaker Shaman, it took eight years for that card. Eight years for that card to finally, you know, be able to, I mean, I, it never reached the price it is at now. and never came close to the, the demand for it. Like, I'd get rid of them. Like, if I wanted to move those six, I could probably move them in the video that it's in. But, wow. So, pick cards that you like, collect those cards... And then sometime in the future, with a deck that is unknown to you, just like Force of Will was unknown to me, I felt like the uh, Contagion was the good one. And I was like, oh, these crappy people keep giving me Force of Whales. Yep. Penhaven, same exact scenario. I have a ton of Penhavens, but not for the right reason. Not because I felt like, oh, Penhaven would be really good for that Infect deck 10 years from now. 
she's out of, of course poison counters would be like totally played. No, poison was like the worst mechanism back in the day, like when Penhaven was reprinted. But nowadays, you know, I, I don't want to take credit when these cards that I've speculated on are not because I like knew in the future that Dragons of Tarkir would come out or that Infect would be a good deck or that any of these speculations make any sense at all. Um, I just, they are cards I enjoy collecting and they just so happened I enjoy collecting cards and I'm able to put enough time and capital in these cards for it to look very good on the backside of it. And that's it, that's the honest truth. I can make, I can brag about them, I can show you all the Gitaxi probes, I can show you all the Dragon Speak, I can do that type of stuff. But that wouldn't help you guys because I want to help you build the collection that you can be proud of that in eight years from now, you'll be the ones with the Dragon Speaker Shamans uh, trading into uh, Legacy Staples. Hopefully it doesn't take eight years. That sounds like a long time. Bye guys.